I do get rather impatient with people who look at a section like it's the worst possible thing that could happen. And I think, Daniel, you know, I've talked about that before and just how people want to make whole birth plans and they want to be combative with their provider before they're even in their second trimester because they really, really want to avoid giving birth a certain way. And, and I wish more people did know these stories so they wouldn't feel like the worst outcome right. is a surgical birth. You got to have compassion for those people too, because it's just like, Danielle, you didn't know. They don't know. If you don't talk about it, you, you can't know. And so it's hard because you, you know, me, like I, I want to be straight to the point and say, you know, like this isn't it. And sometimes people don't respond well to that, you know? So it's more like, I understand that you feel this way and you have to validate those feelings, but then just kind of get into the, but this at, to what cost, at what cost do you want to do this? And then let them make those decisions from there. But it's just so hard to watch someone knowing, not knowingly, but you read their stories and you know that this is putting the baby in risk and you just, you want to share because holy crap, girl, you don't want to do that. Or you just, we're make, not making the right choices. Well, someone asked about an upcoming C-section and and they wanted to know what our experiences were. And I said, the thing with my second C-section is that when I had my first C-section, it was an emergency. You don't get any time to think. So, you know, basically your mind's just a blur. But I was so concerned about having surgery. I mean, it was this really, really big thing in my mind. And then when I had it, it was like, oh, this isn't the big deal I thought it was. Yeah, it's significant. Yes, I have to deal with it. But the surprising thing to me was that I could deal with it. And it wasn't as difficult as I thought it might be. It was just one of those things where it's like, oh, this is surgery. Oh, this is not it, not as hard as I thought it was, especially not compared to labor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I guess it's that fear of the unknown, right? You build it up to oh, yeah. be this big event in your head. And then when you're pregnant, you know, that's nine months of building and you're scared, you know, and you hormones are flying. You're already feeling oh, so much more all at once. And so, you know, things that are happy, feel so much happier. Things that are scary, feel so much scarier. And so with a C-section, people go in there. I can't, they just, I can't do it. This is, this can't be what I want. Nope. I'm going to do my birth plan. And if I work hard enough, I'll get to do my work, my plan. And so I think a lot of trauma comes from that too, is, you know, having that mindset and then not and doing the work is what they say, I guess, to get to that point. Um, and then not getting their V back or their vaginal birth. You know, I guess that leaves them with some type of, I don't want to say trauma, but trauma, you know, they think that they did the, all the right things and they don't get it. So I think, and it's important to your point to um, just kind of have that, you know, I can do it on either side, you know? Yeah. I think just, just, the concept that you can do it either one you can yeah, do a vaginal can. birth you can do a c-section you i don't there are people who have had panic attacks on the table who yeah. had anxiety disorders and you know someone i still remember that one person who asked i have anxiety disorder will i have a panic attack and i said possibly you have an anxiety disorder you have panic attacks this is a trigger and you've done panic attacks you've gotten through them and she did she had a panic attack and she got through it and then after the panic attack was over and then it was like okay that's behind you whatever you're doing now then you can be present for it so it's not optimal it's not desirable it's not but it's something if you have anxiety disorder, 
you have experienced and you know you can do, even if you yeah, don't you want to. Yeah, you can draw. Yeah. So, so you have a, a, a battle plan, so to speak. And it's just that kind of unknown part, which is where, and, and then of course you get into the, I don't know if I want to call it a goal oriented trap, but people who are goal oriented set a goal and then they work towards it and their whole focus is achieving that goal and so if they're the kind of person that this works for in their life then they they do not have a lot of experience with not meeting their goal and yeah it's probably very upsetting to them I mean I can imagine Absolutely. I can empathize with that. Like you, you do all the things you think you're supposed to do. You follow the advice of whomever to get your desired outcome. And then when you don't get it, it's hard not to put the blame on yourself when people are saying, well, if you do X, Y, and Z, you've got it, you can do it. But then it doesn't happen. And you're like, well, what did I do wrong? What is wrong with you see, Especially when you see other people Yes. Who did X, Y, and Z and got theirs. And then you're just, I mean, it's, it's not, not the word personal, but it's a, it's a contrast you can see as opposed to if you were just thinking, I'm into this by myself, I am working towards this goal and there's no one else to compare yourself to. Yeah. That's going to be a different feeling than sitting there and watching all the other people post their happy stories about the VBACs they got or whatnot. Yeah. And I think it's just a lot of them, instead of thinking, you know, oh, okay, well, apparently, you know, if I do X, Y, and Z, sometimes I can get this desired outcome, but sometimes we may not. And instead they think, you know, well, I must've done something wrong because everybody gets this outcome when they see that, you know, all those other stories. And it's just sad at that point too, to combat the misinformation about it, because even though they've seen that you may not get this outcome, they're just so hardwired to blame themselves for not getting it instead of taking a step back and saying, oh, you know what? Well, you know, ACOG does say that the VBAG success rate is whatever percentage. It's, they just take it upon themselves and it hurts to watch. Because it's like, there's nothing wrong with you. Sometimes your body just cannot. Yeah. I think that goes back to like this natural idea of that our bodies were created to do this. So we have like this, this thing that's like just around like women, like you're made to get pregnant. You're made to birth your baby vaginally. And guess what? Not everyone gets pregnant. Like not everyone gets pregnant when they want to people try for years, people have to get help. Like there's a lot of things, just that alone, just that first step to even pregnancy and birth, it doesn't go like people think. And actually a lot of people actually struggle with it. It's actually very, very common, but we don't talk about it. We don't know about it because people deal with it privately in their own homes, with their own families, with their partners. And, you know, and we don't share those type of like, it's a type of grief really. And then, you know, then you get pregnant and then we have this idea of like, you have to have a vaginal birth, but it's like, but that's not always how that works either. And we should know that because of history, because if, if we looked back in history and we all were having vaginal births that we would realize babies got stuck and we die. Like we would realize there's like a bunch of horrible history around birth and pregnancy that we don't talk about at all, but somehow this day and age, we've come so far, maybe we've medically advanced or we've been advancing all these years that we've come so far that we really just have this sense of like, it is my duty. Like it is in my DNA that I am a woman that I will get pregnant and have a baby vaginally. And you do all these things to prep your body, to prepare for labor, all these, like people are oiling themselves or doing like all these things to like, you know, and then you get to that point and it doesn't work out. And now it's like, it's not only did you fail, but you're like, I'm not like now the womanhood of, you know, your DNA, your, your bloodline, like you failed generations somehow. And now you have to like live up to that. And that is something that I've seen in like, in the home birth community of like how easy it is for them to shame a mom out 
because the mom, of course, is going to just bow right out and disappear because she has to deal with her own feelings of her own guilt, you know, her own shame, her own blame, and then look at and be like, but my mom had 10 kids and she had vaginal births and, you know, and everything went okay for her. Why didn't, why didn't this happen for me? And look at all my friends in the community and they're all, you know, I've taken care of my body. I've ate right. I've done all these things my midwife told me to do, but yet somehow I ended up transferring. Somehow this happened to my baby. This happened to my body. And it's, there's just like a whole thing around it. And I, I don't want to say it's like this societal, like we have the society mentality of like, is. this is a woman's job, but that's yeah. what it is. It's like, it it's is. our duty. You know what I mean? It is. Yeah. So, there's the good mother trope and then there's other tropes too. Uh, but one of the things that we aren't taught, which we, which I did I never realized there was such a deficit in our society is we are not taught how to support people who are struggling with these things. You have infertility, you have problems conceiving, you have problems caring. We aren't taught how to support these people who are struggling. So naturally say I am trying to get pregnant and I'm struggling and my friends and family know I'm struggling. I don't really talk about it. If they bring it up and ask how I'm doing, I don't know how to talk to them about it. I just, it just, you just feel terribly uncomfortable and isolated. And it's, it's something that I think that we should be teaching each other how to do better because I agree. Yeah. So my, so my daughter Carson um, and Kinsley, so both of my girls were conceived from IVF. And so my husband and I struggled for like two years before we ended up going to um, the reproductive endocrinologist. And so it was just really hard. You know, you have people, when are you having babies? What are you going to do? When are you going to get pregnant? And you feel all that pressure. And then I, so to your point, I said, um, you know, I was really vocal. One of the ways that I deal with the things in my life is to be vocal and try and raise awareness where I can. Um, and so we would talk about it and even, you know, asking for help and saying, you know, like, Hey, like I'm really hurting, like kind of like when you lose a child, people just don't know what to say at all. And so like he said, Anja, it's, we need to learn how to better support people because even when they are asking for help or saying, you know, I'm really going through it. Like I'm just in a dark place. It's, we want to help. They want to help. I don't think anything is done, you know, uh, what's the word Male malevolently, you know, but it's, they just don't know how because it's awkward, right? No one talks about it. It's taboo because as women, we should just be able to pro procreate, right? Or frequently, you only hear, hear about the successes, you know, so-and-so struggled yes. for five years to get pregnant, and then they got pregnant, and happy ending. So what do you know? Do you know what went on those five years? No, because we're not talking about it. You don't talk about, I went through, you know, three cycles, three implantations, you know, it didn't take, or they took, and then you had like a first try, yeah, miscarriage, you know, we don't talk about it. And, you know, maybe, it, it, I, maybe I, I don't want to tell people, hi, talk about something that you find very painful and uncomfortable to, to share with other people. But, you know, think about one way to say, you know, this has not been a good year for us. We've tried and it's been, you know, failure after failure. So, we have not gotten where we want to be. Yeah. Being honest, you know, actually being honest instead of saying, yeah, it's been a great year. I'm doing great. Everything's good. You know, you just, you want everyone, you show the surface, you know, you just want everyone to think that everything's fine and you are strong and you are handling whatever's coming your way, but it's sometimes not, just not the case. 